Hello and welcome everyone to another one of After Nightfall's Cast Catch Up. Uh, I'm taking the interview reins today because we're interviewing the wonderful Wayne Tunks. Hey Wayne! Hey! Now, Wayne is a writer, producer, director and actor of the web series After Nightfall. So uh, my first question for you would be, um, how do you manage those four roles? Oh, <laughs> you know, since I first began uh, making theatre in 2000, I've always taken on lots of roles. I don't think I've ever just done one thing. Uh, I, I really enjoy doing it. I'm also a control freak, uh, which I think is, is very evident to anyone who has ever worked with me. Um, you know, because there is that whole theory of, if, you know, if if you want it done right, do it yourself. And I guess that's such a dad thing to say. Uh, and I'm not even a dad, I'm just a screen dad. Um, but, you know, it, it is the way. I, you know, I, I know that I'm, I'm going to do what I want done. But, you know, I, I do genuinely love doing all of those roles. Um, you know, I, I love to write, I love to direct, produce and act. And, and if you really break it apart, you know, writing is done right at the start and producing yeah. is done before the shoot. And then, so then on set, I am playing with that directing and acting thing, but I, I really do enjoy it. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy doing it. So as, as long as people enjoy what I'm doing, I'll keep doing it. <laughs> well, you do a great job in all four roles, Thanks. but is there one that you, like, favour a little more than the other, others? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm a writer first and foremost. I, I love that more than anything. You know, that old question that, you know, if you could only do one thing, what would it be? Definitely writing. It's, uh, I feel like it's my calling, so, yeah. yeah. Well, that brings me to my next question. It's a great uh -oh. segment, actually. Um, what was your inspiration for After Nightfall? When I was growing up, my favourite TV series was uh, Twin Peaks. There was just something about it that just blew my mind. I was in late high school and I just remember watching it and it was like, this is actually a TV show? This is incredible. <laughs> uh, and so I just really enjoyed every element of it. I enjoyed the murder mystery, but I enjoyed sort of that supernatural element as well. And, and yes, I didn't go for the quirk of, of Twin Peaks in After Nightfall, but I, I took that murder mystery and I, I took that supernatural element. And I really enjoy the genre of noir. I think it's a really interesting genre that... Um, is sort of so old school, but I thought it was really cool to put it into a modern day Australian setting and to have, you know, these people with Australian accents doing noir. I thought it was something not many people are doing and I, I really wanted to do. And also I think it's great for an actor because every character in noir is flawed and, and certainly everyone in After Nightfall is, yeah. which I think is a really great challenge for the actor. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so you played Colin McLeavy in uh, After Nightfall, so Troy's dad, and it's evident from the very, very beginning of the series that you and Troy have a, a, a beautiful connection. And uh, it's a very emotional role, and I just wanted to, to find out how you felt playing such an emotional role. Yeah, it, it, it was great. It, you know, that was the kind of the, the joy of being able to write for yourself. You know, you can write yourself a really good role. Uh, <laughs> And I think any actor who has ever written knows that, you know. And yes, I, I wanted to create great roles for other people, but I certainly wanted to create myself a good role. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed that challenge. And, and grief is so hard as an actor. It's such a big challenge, but it is so rewarding when you feel like you've got it. Yeah. Um, and it was, it was a, it, it really, I, there were days I would leave set and I would just be completely shattered because... Okay. You know, grief is, is a big thing. I think one of my favourite moments ever was you and I at the funeral because we cried for two days straight at that funeral. Yeah, we did. Um, and I had a lot of my students on set and I think they were really interested in the way that you and I would get crying because we would hold each other's hands and look like deep into our <laughs> eyes. Uh, and then we would start crying. And, and like it was just, I think it was interesting for the students to see that happen. That kind of preparation and, and, and how some people come about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you did a great job in all your emotional scenes. Thank uh, you. I was going to ask you what your memorable moment was, but would you say it was the uh, funeral scene or is there something else as well that you... Um, I really enjoyed the stuff in season one um, when it was just Troy and I. Like, I really enjoyed uh, when I'm sleeping on the lounge and, and he appears at the door behind me and then suddenly he's looking right into my face, which was one of the first moments that I came, came up with as a writer. When I came up with the idea and I knew that I wanted to be the dad to see the ghost, 
I visualized that scene probably before anything else in my head. So to actually act that out was was fantastic. And I loved, you know, chasing him through the backyard and yelling out, try! <laughs> <laughs> There's something freeing about, about about doing those kind of scenes and about yeah. acting that you can just scream and emote because, you know, as people, I think particularly as Australians, we're told all the time to hold back our emotions. So that's the beautiful thing about being an actor is that you can just let them all go. Yeah, yeah. We Again, you did a fantastic job. Um, I'm going to harp back a bit on the writing. Um, so if no, there's a bit of a spoiler alert because the question I'm going to ask you is linked to uh, who the murderer was. Um, so when writing it, because yeah. um, so many people didn't pick the character that you chose in the end to be uh, the person who murdered Troy, how do you write that where, because there are little clues throughout and there's little, like there's red herrings and there's little moments where, you, where if people had picked them up, would have given them a clue to who it was. As a writer, that must be so exciting to write like that. It is. And people would see clues that I didn't even think were clues. <laughs> and that's, I think, the beauty of, of words is that people will read things into them all the time. That's how we have disagreements in life, is that people <laughs> constantly yeah, read things that aren't there. Like, there was a moment in uh, episode two, um, and we had a big screening uh, at the cinema for episode one and two. And there was a scene where Dave is on the phone and uh, hangs up and he says, my nephew's dead. And Leanne says, Troy. And everyone took that to mean that she did it. Because they were like, well, how else would she know? She's got to, you know, there's two nephews. And I was like, but the answer is that he's on the phone to Quinton. You know, like, because he says, oh, you know, give your best to, give my best to your dad. You know, so it's clear that he's speaking to his to Quinton, but everyone took that to mean that she knew that Troy was dead, which was uh, like it was beautiful for me. I was like, okay, sure, I'm not <laughs> going to deny that. <laughs> and uh, were you pleased with the fact that you could keep it uh, a secret for so long? So pleased. That is always the worry when you yeah. do a murder mystery that people are going to watch it and in the episode two they go, "Oh, that person did it," and then it's like a wah wah wah. And I, you know, in the back of my mind, because we did season one and didn't reveal who the killer was, and I did, I didn't start writing season two until after season one had been released. So okay. if everyone had said this is the murderer and got it right, I would have had to change. Okay, but. Wow. I would have, I would have. If, if everyone guessed the murderer, I would have changed. But no one guessed the murderer. So I was safe with my initial. Like, literally no one got it. Like, yeah. people might get it if they were saying six names, but no yeah. one flat out and went, bam, that's the murderer. So that was that was great for, um, yeah, you know, it was good for the ego to, to not have people guess. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And people were guessing the whole way through when they were guessing different people too, which was... Fantastic. It kept the interest and I think that's why it's such a good series. Which leads me into why should people watch it? You've asked all of us why people should watch it. Why should they watch it? Um, I think, you know, it's really, really important for people to go out and see more things than just what big companies want to show us. You know, I think there's a lack of originality out there at the moment in big movies. You know, people are doing remakes and people are doing the 50th sequel or all of that kind of stuff. And I think it is independent work where you see really fresh and new things. And yes, I said I, I based, you know, Twin Peaks was my inspiration, but this was a very new story, new characters, a whole new world. Um, and so I really think that people should go out there and not just watch this, but check out other web series or check out plays and, and check out small indie artists because they are creating things that are amazing and not many people are seeing them. And you can be the one to say to your friends, oh my God, have you watched this? And then suddenly they all could be watching it. Um, and you were the one that, that, that gave that. But on a purely selfish point of view, I think people should watch After Nightfall because it's a great story. I, I think it is a really fantastic story. You know, it's only just over two hours and you will get to watch the whole season one and two. And you will be taken on an emotional journey through many of the characters. Uh, you know, and I think it, it has some really important things that it says about... Um, gay rights, uh, which is something in my career that I'm very passionate about. But I also think that murder mystery element is, is, is really fantastic and important. And the performances are wonderful. Like, the actors are great. 
The crew is amazing. Uh, everyone did such a brilliant job that I think people should check it out and um, really enjoy it. Excellent. So watch it, people. Watch it. Um, so what's up next for you? Uh, so I've got a lot of things on the plate, just for a change. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm currently in post-production for my first feature film, which is According to Otto. Uh, we did Pitch a Lock the other day, which is exciting. Um, and I will start my second feature film uh, early next year, which is called Bitch. It's an adaption of one of my plays. Um, we were supposed to be shooting that now, but because of the world as it is, yeah. uh, that didn't happen. So instead, uh, this weekend, you and I, are shooting a short film called Over Cater is Anonymous, uh, which is a little 10 minute uh, mockumentary. Um, so it's gonna be fun to shoot that. And yeah. you know, I, it's gonna be fun to do some comedy because I think I've been doing <laughs> lots and lots of drama. So it's it's really fun because I love comedy. Yeah. And I was gonna say, it'd be nice for you not to cry, but uh, uh, you're cry. crying in this as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love to make Jack cry, she does it well. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for having the interview with me and yeah. um, during this time. And thank you for creating After Nightfall. It's a wonderful series. Um, the fact that you wrote it, directed it, produced it and uh, is star in it is just amazing. Um, so many talents. So thank you and uh, watch it people, After Nightfall. <laughs>